how are we doing? What do you think? Roses are red, bots are blue. Here are some flowers, I bought them for you. That's nice. Man, I gotta do better. It's our six week anniversary. It'll start with blue. Let's see, how about to Tina with all my love, Ryan? It's perfect. To Tina, <laughs> all my love, Ryan. Happy sixth anniversary, sweetie. Thank you. They're so beautiful, if I do say so myself. Have a rest, would you? Taking an early coffee break, you want anything? No, we're fine. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> I should go, I got band rehearsal at noon. Okay, we'll get going before I lock you in here. Before, right? No, we met at the laundromat. Hmm, remind me. I ran out of detergent, and you loaned me a cup. Such a beautiful gesture. I appreciate that, but it was just a cup of laundry detergent. We both know that it was a lot more than that. There were all those other people there, and none of them offered to help me. Only you. When you handed me that cup, and we looked into each other's eyes, that's when I knew that it was love at first sight. Um, that's sweet of you, <clears throat> George, but I'm, I'm busy. But there's something I have to tell you, something you need to know. Okay. You have to stop me, Tina. From, from what? I'm very sorry about this, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to kill you. I'm calling the police. Nine one one. What is your emergency? Hello, is anyone there? When you're in love, the world seems perfect. Just ask Tina Bishop. But unrequited love, that's a different story altogether. And Tina is about to find out just how painful and dangerous it can be. You're traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are only that of the imagination. You're entering the Twilight Zone. So wait a minute. Did he actually say he was gonna kill you? Unless if I stopped him. Did you call the police? Of course I did. And what'd they say? They told me to call them back as soon as he reappears again out of thin air, so obviously they think I'm nuts. Do you even remember meeting this guy at the laundromat? I don't know, maybe. And his name tag. It just said George. It said, hi, I'm George. That's all. And he had a long sleeve blue polo shirt on, like a store uniform. Hold on, a blue polo shirt? Mm-hmm. I've seen those before. she's talking about. I, I don't know that woman, and I've never been to her flower store. Oh, come on. That is such a lie. Calm down, Miss Bishop. So you deny ever threatening this woman? Of course I deny it. 
How can I threaten her when I've never even spoken to her? Oh, well, what about the laundry and the sacred cup of detergent I gave you? You recall that incident? No, I don't recall that ever happening. Oh, then who came to visit me today? Your twin brother? I don't have a brother, and I've been here all day. Can anyone confirm that, Mr. Strayton? Sure. Uh, Neil, my manager, uh, Renee, the cashier. So that's it? You're just gonna let him go? What else can I do? His alibi holds. Well, maybe he snuck out the back door. My store is just right up the street. Interesting theory. But I need some proof. <sighs> Look, if he shows up again, threatens you in any way, call me immediately. You either need to catch him in the act or you need a witness. Without that, there's no case. <sighs> well, that was a big help. You've had a rough day. I'll do the bank run. You believe me, don't you? Of course I believe you. But I gotta tell you, T. Tell me what? That straighten guy doesn't exactly seem like the second coming of Hannibal Lecter. <sighs> yeah, but he's hiding it, that's all. How many news reports have you seen where the neighbors go, oh, he seemed like the nicest guy until he kills 12 people? How could you do it? How could you choose him over me? How'd you get in here? When you started dating him, I thought, okay, maybe they're just friends. But that night when he took you to the Austin Powers movie, you went to his apartment and you stayed there all night. You've been spying on me? And last month, when you rented that cabin with him in the mountains, Stalking me? He doesn't open doors for you, pay for your dinners. He doesn't treat you right. Hey, George, um, why can't we just, you know, like... There's only one way to save yourself, one possible way. You have to get rid of your boyfriend. Dump him. End it as soon as possible. I can't do that. I'm trying to save your life, Tina. <sighs> oh my God. Ryan, Ryan, he's in the back. He's in the back right now. I'll get wait, that wait, back. Wait, Ryan! Ryan, are you okay? No one's there, Tina. Yeah, Gorman's Pet Store. Is George working tonight? Yes, he is. Great. Thanks. Son of a bitch is there right now. Okay, well, then we should call the detective first. What's he gonna do? It's your word against Straightens. Don't worry, I'll handle this. And how do you plan to do that? Hey, I'm just gonna go talk to the whack job. Me and him are gonna come to an understanding, man to man. Don't do anything stupid. No worries. Just go home, have a bath, and chill. As soon as I set this guy straight, I'll come right over. He's right, T. I can finish up here and go home. I wasn't too smart, Tina. What are you doing here? I'm trying to save your life. And what do you do? You sick your boyfriend on me? Is Ryan all right? Don't worry about Ryan. Worry about your own life, because now I won't be able to stop myself. Your only choice is to get away, far away. You want me to leave the city? Yes. You have to go someplace safe. I won't be able to find you. My whole life is here. I can't just do that. If you stay here, you will die. He 
Jackie Hanley, hey. This is Tina. What can I do for you? Um, he's here right now. George? Yes, George Strayton. Are you okay? Lucky for you, your boyfriend claims you had nothing to do with this. Or you might be in as much trouble as he is. There must be a mistake. He was right there with me in the parking lot. Look at the time, Miss Bishop. 6.17 p.m., the exact hour and minute you called me. But that, that's impossible. Exactly. Because George Strayton can't be in two places at once. Now can he? I'm just gonna go talk to him, Ryan. Just man to man. Tina! You saw the tape with your own eyes in freaking black and white. I don't care what's on that videotape. All I know is that he was right here with me. Yeah, sure, at the same time I was beating the crap out of him. Happens every day. Now you sound like Gwen. Gwen makes sense, you don't. Well, I saw him. Then you were hallucinating. Yo, know, listen, I don't care what you think. I know exactly what's going on, and so does that son of a bitch straighten. You're not gonna let this go, are you? What do you think? I think starting now, you can handle this on your own. Fine. I will. I don't understand how Straighten did it. How could he be in two places at once? can't. Nobody can. It's impossible. So what are you saying, that I'm making this up? I'm not saying anything, T. But we know the guy doesn't have a twin, and nobody's actually seen him act like a psycho except you. Oh, so I'm the crazy one. Is that it? Look, I'm no psychiatrist. But you're saying I need one. I'm saying maybe it wouldn't hurt. Do you remember the therapist I went to after my mom died? It's just somebody to talk to. That's all. Look, just think about it. pretend all you want that you're normal but I know and I'm gonna prove it even if it means following you everywhere you go lady you're out of your mind out of my mind I'm not the stalker I'm not the one saying that I'm gonna kill somebody no you're the one who, who sent your boyfriend over to beat me up I, mean, I don't even know you look why don't you just leave me alone leave you alone yeah I really I can't take this anymore well, neither can I. And if you ever come near me again, I'm calling the police. Now, if I were you, I'd get some professional help. Bishop, um, I'm, I'm calling because I need to ma make an appointment with you. Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what's what's real anymore. There's this guy, and um, he's, I guess he's planning on, on killing me, but he might not even be there. It, it could be a, a total hallucination, so 
Obviously, I, I could really use your help. So could you call me when you can? It's 555-0123. Thanks. I tried to prevent it. You have to believe me. I don't know what to believe it. You keep saying that you're gonna kill me, but then, they, then you say that you want to save me. You can't imagine how hard this has been for me. It's literally torn me apart. I'm a good person, really. I am. At least part of me is. Sometimes it's just a voice that whispers in our ear. An impulse for decency resides in even the darkest of souls. And that voice can sometimes make the difference between life and death. Just ask Tina Bishop. 